Hello everybody, welcome to part two, the wet fly with a pheasant. Alright, here's our part two. We are going to start with the male tail again. However, we are primarily going to be using the female body for this one. I don't want to single anyone out. So, to start, I need a tail fiber. And these are some, like, you know, pheasant tail is some of the best fibers ever. But at the base of the tail, there are these smaller feathers. And the fibers are a little more pointed, and they're a little softer. They absorb water much better. That's where I'm gonna get my tail from. All right, so this is a fire hole, 317, size 16. And this is really the only hook I tie, uh, well, not only, but one of the very few hooks that I tie wet flies on. It's just got a perfect bend to it. The hook rate is really great. Um, I, I really like this hook. So there's my tail from that feather that we previously discussed. I'm going to try to line the fibers up as best as possible. Again, I want like five or six fibers there. And I want the tail to be pointed downward. So make sure, again, I want it to be about the length of the hook shank. But make sure when you tie it in, that it is pointing downward. So you want to tie it into the bend of the hook a little bit. You see how it's got a nice profile going down? So there we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do on the primary wing feather, so there's our wing right here. On the very leading one, there are these small fibers and that is where you get what are called biots from. And so I am going to take one of those from the female wing. So this is a female cape. I'll show you guys a picture of it. Um, the females are much more drab. They're much more drab um, than the males are. Oops, that was not a good one. Um, which presents a unique opportunity. Because if you're looking for drab colors, Sometimes the pretty males are not always the best pick. So, here is our, that is one bio. And what you wanna do, there's a colorful side, or a more colorful side, I guess, and a clear side. You wanna tie in the clear side facing you. All right. Now, I'm not gonna add any wire to this or anything. This um, thread is eight aught thread and it's an olive color. Again, I'm trying to make this kind of a drab, um, kind of a drabish color. There's not a lot of, the good thing about drab colors is there's not a lot of super um, exciting colored bugs in the water. Most of them are brown and olive. All right, now that's tied in. What I'm gonna do is take my hackle pliers and I'm going to latch on to this little biot, this pheasant biot. And I'm going to begin to wrap it. The uh, biot is actually pretty strong. So you don't really need to worry about breaking it. So I'm going to try to leave a small gap in between each I don't know if we can see that or not. Oh yeah, we can. I'm gonna try to leave a small gap in between each wrap. So it'll have this kind of olivey, drabish appearance. I'm just gonna catch it right on top. There we go, so you're not left with much excess, and that is just fine. Oop. So we'll pinch that down and work our way back. So there's our body, this like, you know, just little buggy body with some segmentation. Um, I really like it. So now we have a little light colored tail here, sort of a contrasting body, and so I'm going to build up some if I could find it, there it is, a light colored dubbing ball or, 
or thorax. So here I have some red squirrel harvested from green mane. And all I'm gonna do is make a little ball like so. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit on there. Just make a nice stubbing ball, okay? So from here, I want it to be a little fluffy. So I'm gonna brush it out a little bit because emerging insects are not the neatest looking bugs out there. So from there, I'm gonna do one more thing and I'm going to take a feather from the back of the female. So here's a feather from the back of the female. And I'm gonna use this gray stuff down here. Do you see this gray stuff? I'm gonna pull off a little bit. Just a little bit. Come on. There we go. I'm gonna wrap that on here as well. So there we go. And I just wanna be able to make one or two wraps with it. Perfect. And I'm gonna brush that out as well. This is just gonna make my body a little bigger. Nice, that's fantastic right there. And a little more robust, so it'll look, um, just have a little more depth to it in the water. Okay, now, there we go. You don't want it to cover the entire body because you want this body to be exposed. That segmentation is is very vital for the fish, I believe. And maybe not, you know, what do I know? But I believe that segmentation is key. So now we're gonna go back to the wing of the female. And you cannot find this on a male. This is the shoulder blade. Do you see these little, little feathers? They have really short fibers, so that's the wing and that's the shoulder blade. That's where we're gonna take this feather from. And it's very light colored, it has a very good contrast with some dark blotches in the middle. Males do not have this feather. So what I'm gonna do is right there, I peel it down. I'm gonna grab it by the tip, pull out some feathers, and tie in the tip, like so. So if you're looking for this feather on a male pheasant tail, you, as I have previously said, are out of luck. Only females have this color, this like light, you know, good contrast, yeah, whatever. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take my hackle pliers again, grab it, I'm gonna work the fibers backwards. Don't pull too hard. And then I'm gonna start making my wraps. Forward, keep on pulling those fibers back. And we're gonna to try to do three complete wraps, maybe, maybe fourth one. Yeah, we got a little room. It's important not to crowd the eyes on these. So we'll catch it once. Try not to get too many fibers like I am right now. <laughs> Two, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna pull, I'm gonna pull the hackle pliers back and pull everything back. Pull everything back and I'm gonna start making a little head. And I'm gonna catch those fibers. Now I'll come in, it's secured and nice and tight. I'm gonna come in and make this really cool looking pattern here. Like incredibly cool. See, it's it's so hard to find this feather on any other bird because they just don't have the coloration like that, where it's kind of lighter on the tips and dark on the dark on the uh, inside. I don't know if I'm making sense or not. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give this one little pull there, and that I mean that that's a trout snack. If you're looking for snacks, that's a trout snack. And for this. Sometimes I'll make the heads look nice and fancy. Um, 
I don't think it's incredibly important for this one. But I do like to put a little drop of super glue right on the top and on the sides. Just because this fly gets eaten so much that the head frequently comes unraveled because if there's, you know, after so many trout, they have little tiny teeth and it just unravels. So I do like to put a little bit of head cement. So there's our partridge, mostly female. Uh, soft tackle, a tremendous pattern with great coloration, imitates pretty much any emerging insect and, and it's, I mean the possibilities and combinations are endless. So thank you for watching. Next time we'll be talking about a dry fly, everyone's favorite of course. So we hope to see you there. Thanks.